morning everyone and welcome to I think Wednesday. We stayed overnight at a place called Lee. I guess we left the steady cam in the van. Uh, interesting place. I'll turn the camera around, you can have a look. Well to get to Lee, it was quite an impressive uh, quite an impressive road, marked up with several, you know, abandoned hope all you here enters. And uh, yep. About a one in five slope on the way down in places. Uh, gets to about seven foot six, I think, is the warning at one point. And when you get down here, it's very strange. Sorry if you live up there, I don't think anyone does, to be fair. But uh, it's quite interesting. We'll start over here, which I think is vaguely reminiscent of the Bow Fiddle Rock type affair. And then I've just seen a rather large ship out there with the shortest heads in the shop on this. big house over there is just entirely abandoned. We've just had a very interesting chat with a local fella. He came down with his camper van relatively early last night and made very little noise. And he said that there's toilets up the hill. Now of course we're self-contained and I have to do this YouTube special thing where I pretend I've not been here before and then say, oh look, look at this, it's amazing. But I have been into these toilets. Slight wind noise there. And these are amazing. I mean, I know that's a weird thing to say, you're gonna love the echo in here. Oh, look at that, that's a proper echo. But the detail in here, the way that even the tiles are rounded, it's absolutely wonderfully done. I mean, it's clearly an old building. We've got the, the metal window frames and the like, but all the tiles, there's no this like rough it off corner stuff. It's all been really smoothly done. It's lovely little sort of blue trace line around it as well. So Lee, I love your toilets. Uh, I can't say it's a fantastic beach, but it's a beautiful place, very quiet, very overnight. Nothing like a phone signal. Hey, you are, if you want to get away from it all, Lee could well be your place. As you can hear, Pam's engine's ticking away quite nicely. Uh, given the road down here was a one in five down, that means the road out here is a one in five up. We have been advised about going the other way, he said that don't. So uh, given it's one in five, uh, turbo's going to be giving it some welly. So I thought I'd give the engine a minute or two just to warm up, get the oil around it, get it warmed up before we then go and insist that the poor old girl climbs up this monster hill. Really beautiful place, like I said, it's not a huge amount to do here. If there was, it'd be really, really spoilt. But if you look for a nice, simple overnight, where you won't be disturbed, fantastic blues, just up there. literally minutes up the path. And uh, yeah, nice place. German supermarkets to top up food and uh, supplies and bacon, of course. Now we're in Stoke. What do you want to find? In Stoke Rec. Look, I don't mean me.
Ross Castle, and I've asked the locals, that is how you say it. We found the campsite, uh, he's lived a short walk down to the, uh, the village, uh, I'm glad we drove. This seems to be turning into Steve's tour of toilets of Cornwall. Uh, we are at Trebila Farm, a uh, camping and caravanning site. Found it on park for night and very nice host, very pleasant. £20 for the night for me and the good lady, including electric hookup. Um, so here we are, the toilet and shower facilities. We have been told on park for night these are very nice, been invested in. They are very good. Here we are then, Steve's Toilet Tour of Trevila Farm. We have got one, two, three showers, one, two, three toilets, and a wash up room. These are fabulous, so let's have a quick kill. We'll go number two. Really nicely finished. Look how clean and spotless these are. Plenty of space, big heated towel rail. <clears throat> space to hang your towel up. Enough space to swing a dead cat or two, and uh, all wet floor, so dead easy to use. So, nice mirror for the ugly bloke. That'd be the ugly bloke then. And out here, look at that. Heated tower hours, plenty of space, and so. Everything you want, hand dryers, the business. What's really impressive, particularly if you come here uh, as a camper, is this. Look at this. Yeah, I'm excited about this then. So there's actually a freezer for any freeze packs if uh, that's what you need. And uh, the one down below is a fridge if you want to keep anything fresh in there. That's absolutely brilliant. Two very nice washy up sinks, anything you could possibly need. Even got washing up liquid. This is a really nice setup, and I tell you what, washing up with a view like that, that can't be too bad. Anyhow, the kettle's on, it's brew time. Good morning. Well, I think it's fair to say it is blowing a hoolie. It was very breezy last night. Uh, lucky enough, we're quite used to things moving. Generally speaking, living afloat. Today we're going to allegedly Padstow, Padstow uh, Tintagel, Tinder, some castle or another which we're going to look at but not overly hopeful of. Um, it's grey and flat. Oh, and Mevagizzi, obviously, to go and see some pilchards. That's the plan. Padstow. Um, we went via Tintagel, 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 whatever you want to call it. Uh, weather's a bit naff. Not really the day for going exploring, but we did come across a car park there that encourages overnight campers for all of £3.50. Uh, it's got some nice sort of uh, a gravel uh, sort of track up to it, or two gravel tracks up to it, uh, with space for, I would imagine, uh, six campers, possibly eight if they were sensible. Um, we were very amazed by that, to the point where, when we come back down, we have a bus down here as well. Uh, when we come back down here again, and we will, 
that could well be one of our stops. Anyhow, Padstow, it's wet, it's murky. Uh, you can go and fondle a lobster quite seriously. There's the National Lobster Hatchery, uh, £7.50 a head. And to be fair, I think these places don't do themselves any favours. Um, it's not a huge place. I know they're trying to do some good, but you know, 15 quid for two of us for probably an hour or so. Ah, perhaps I'm just being Mr. Grumpy. Right, onwards, we're going to go to Mevagissi. Uh, try and find a shop on the way to top up with a few bits and pieces. See what the journey's like, but it looks pretty much grey and damp and murky. Can't have it always. Change of plan, we're not going to Lou at all. That's where we were going to overnight. We've stopped off at Mevagissi, and the guy in the car park said, How long do you want to stay? And he said, Stay all night if you like. So, although it's not exactly the cheapest place to stop, maybe it's a lovely place, so we're going to stay the night. Well, it's a little bit dark in here, we're at the Model Railway exhibition. So, uh, we're all around, it's uh, chucking it down outside. Cornish pat has been had. Let's have a look. Big railway, carbon scale, and apparently uh, you can push buttons and make it work. So guess what I'm going to do? So here I am, the world's biggest kid, and I've just found this thing down here that says you can drive the train. So I will drive the train. I've worked out that ours is going to be that little green and yellow one, just over oops there. So let's give it a go. Teddy bear uh, driving it. Come on, what, who doesn't like playing with trains? It's amazingly smooth. My beloved is in charge of this one. And in the meantime, I have got it right. Mine's about to come out of here. Oh, look at that. I am just a big kid. Now see if we can get to a nice steady stop at the station. You gotta stop nicely at the station, dear. Here we go. It's a Topham Hatton number two. Ah, beautifully done. Well, it's not raining now, but the weather's a bit glum, it's a bit grey. It's still lacking sunshine, so I'm having a bit, a bit of a recce now with a view to coming up later on with the tripod and hopefully things look better at night uh, with some stars out maybe and uh, some lights in the harbour. So I'm just having a bit of a meander about. This is Cliff Street, which I think street might be pushing it a little bit. It's nice and quiet up here. Pretty much a working harbour still. Never guess see. Because tourism's largely doing its bit for it. Big blessing, of course. Brings in money all summer. Is it vacant all winter? Been looking around. My guess is probably about one in ten ish shops currently vacant, including some rather quite large properties. I had rather hoped to come out here uh, this evening with a bit of a photo shoot in mind. I'm glad I came and checked now before I dragged the red lady out because there's a sign down here that says the pier is shut. So the crazy Egypt is going out, it's about 9 o'clock at night and I've got the tripod, selection for lenses, 
my beloved has seen sense and he's staying the warm and dry. I'm going to go and see what I can find. Um, a bit of nighttime stuff, a bit of evening stuff. Might be good, might not. Only one way of finding out. Quiet night. Happens to be quiet. Both up by seagulls bouncing up and down on the roof. Sal's uh, getting himself into daytime mode. I'm going to have a quick explore. Got some photos last night. Don't know if they turn out well or not. We'll find out. Quick wander around, and uh, because we didn't stop last night where we were going to, I have no idea where we're going next. Well, it's gloriously sunny. Uh, there's blue sky up there. Uh, I'm guessing that we can go across to the pier today uh, or the jetty, whichever you want to call it. Uh, my guess is that the train was purely because there were some pretty decent waves crashing into the harbour wall uh, last night, even at low tide. So maybe it's a wise idea to close it off. sunshine we've had rain we've had mist we've had rain we've had mist we've had rain we've had occasional sunshine and we're currently at Castle Draco and Drogo I won't admit that later I'll just get it wrong and we are going to go and find Fingal Bridge apparently there's a car park next to it and it's very pretty ask me again in half an hour according to the great god Google there's a car park nearby they failed to mention because it's one mile away and down a one in five hill. Ah, okay. Great timing. I have come across this sign that says public footpath road near Fingal Bridge. Hmm. Now, do we stay on the road or do we go down the footpath? Well, this is turning into an adventure. We followed the sign that said footpath and uh, my six foot three frame is currently crouched down trying to avoid having my beautiful hairdo squashed by overhanging branches but we can hear running water. Well I'm pretty certain that uh, we've just found the car park that was on the map. I'm just as pleased we didn't follow it because as we came down that one in five there was a branch that had come down which you could get a standard car pass no problem but no way is over hanging if you're over the top of that or either underneath it so although it's been a somewhat exhilarating walk it's very beautiful water beside us and in front of me I can see a bridge best it be spectacular now trolls and everything
into assorted websites, there's absolutely nothing at all to stop you driving over this. You'd be very brave. Also rather reckless, I feel. Terrible thing to do. They do say, however, it's only six foot four. Given we're six foot 11, I don't think we're gonna make it. And why would we? This is where Satnav doesn't always know best because if it had followed the Satnav to the car park down by the pub, would have come across this. And given our van is eight foot six and I can touch that, we'd have hit that on the way through. Huh. Some justification for walking at this Cambridge Hill then. I would just like to point out that that sign lies because according to our step counter it's near a mile and a half so unless you're an energetic crow with a disregard for flying through solid hills that lies but it was a nice walk here we are at post bridge two very old bridges but the one nearest us is an old clacker bridge and the information panel says it is so old it shows up on the first known road atlas in the UK, which goes back a few hundred years. I don't know how you go about building one of those. I mean, the stones that make up the pillars are big enough, but those ones that go across the top, they're going to be a few ounces. And then to try and convince cattle and things to walk across them. Yeah, good luck with that. More woodland, Hembury Hill Farm. Quite a nice place to be. Just a couple of cars here. Apparently, it's really popular with dog walkers. Not too bad. We found some levelish to park. Jobs are good. Un. to set off and use Saturday as an exploring day but we've got up this morning and the weather can be described as yeah hey subtitle that so rather than mess about and just go places so go going places we're gonna set off uh, for home we're about three and a half hours away we will get ready for our next adventure we do have a date but not a location so as the saying goes subscribe uh, click the like say wonderful things and all that palaver and we will see you on the next adventure Thank you.